Okay, I'd like to thank everyone for attending. Uh, this is an hour with Vanderbilt University, and it's uh, being hosted by Your College Navigator and A-List. Uh, my name is Michael Binder, and I am trying to advance my slides. <laughs> Here we go. There we go. Okay, it wasn't going, but now it is. Mike, Michael Binder, President and Founder of Your College Navigator, and I have with me uh, Scott Farber, who's President and Founder of A-List, and we are today, uh, this is the third uh, webinar that we are doing. Um, it's the third university as part of a continuing uh, process that we're going to be doing over the next several months. Uh, we have with us today uh, Ms. Jan Dyke, who's Assistant Director of uh, Office of Undergraduate Admissions from Vanderbilt University, and what she's going to cover today are the qualities of Vanderbilt University and what the university looks for in its candidates, and then we're going to have a question and answer session. Uh, the agenda, I'm going to have uh, Scott Farber is going to talk a little bit, uh, just for a couple of minutes, about A-List. I'm going to, Michael Binder is going to talk about Your College Navigator, talk just a little bit about the administration how we're going to handle the administration here from a question and answer point of view. I'm going to turn it over. The majority of the discussion is going to be uh, by Vanderbilt University, probably about a half an hour or so, maybe a little bit longer, where uh, Jan is going to be talking about Vanderbilt. And then we're going to open it up for questions and answers. Um, and if you have questions, there should be, you should have a, a control panel on your right-hand side. And if you have any questions, you could just enter the questions uh, just type in your questions, and we will probably hold the questions until the end, and then we'll try and cover as many of the questions as we possibly can. So, Scott, I am going to turn it to you as soon as this advances. There we go. Sure. Thank you so much, uh, Michael, and uh, welcome to all of you. So glad that you could join us here. Um, uh, as it's already been said, I'm the president and founder of a company called A-List Education. And a little bit about who we are, and uh, I know that some of you actually are uh, on this webinar as uh, our students or um, through some sort of network that we've built with uh, many schools that we work with. I founded the company in 2005 with about five students. Last year we served almost 35,000 students across 20 states, but our headquarters here in New York means that our primary geographic areas on uh, Long Island and uh, in the five boroughs. We work with schools and school districts and nonprofit institutions. I was very lucky. I got nearly a full ride to attend Harvard University. And so the idea of opening doors through your college education is something that is particularly near and dear to my heart. And I know from personal experience that in order to be able to find an opportunity at the country's leading institutions, it's necessary that you distinguish yourself in a couple of different ways. One of the things I tell my students is that when we talk about things like SAT scores or ACT scores or GPA, there are going to be a lot of really great candidates that can put the numbers on the board. In fact, the year that I applied to school, two-thirds of the kids with perfect SAT scores were rejected, and I got in. It's important that you remember that as we go through the presentation today because when we're trying to figure out what's a great school and a great fit for you, you want to, of course, appreciate that Vanderbilt, as an amazing institution, is looking beyond simply the numbers. And I'm sure that Jan will be able to walk you through that. One of the things that we try and do is build up those numbers so that the rest of the story that makes you, you, can be told through your application. Uh, we talk about results over time. We've got, uh, I've taught about 4,000 students myself. We've got a staff of about 100. And one of the things that we really are proud of is the improvements we've been able to develop for our students in SAT scores and ACT scores. Uh, the national average of PSAT to SAT improvements, about 55 points. Our average, close to 300 points. So we're talking about five to six times the national average. On the ACT, national average plus one. Our students, average plus 4.8. So we're really good at being able to move the scores so that you can continue to tell the story that makes you an outstanding applicant while count you, counting yourself into consideration for the best universities that are out there. Um, we have a whole range of different products that we help students and families utilize in order to gain admission to the best universities. Uh, we've created a book of, uh, I would say, outstandingly researched, but that sounds a little bit like gloating, but let's just say thoroughly researched based on 15 years of published exams in the SAT and ACT that we humbly title the Book of Knowledge. We help you build things like um, your vocabulary because students often say, well, I don't want to study for a test. 
I'd like to highlight that building a vocabulary is not about the SAT or the ACT, but because you speak English. And imagining yourself in an interview with Vanderbilt University means you have to come up with more than one syllable words. To make that more interesting for you, we created 30 second video clips. You can actually watch your vocabulary through something called vocab videos. And in order to make your life a lot easier as you actually apply to college, we built a platform called College Essay Organizer so that as you take a look at all of the wonderful universities in your college list, rather than try and write 47 different required questions, we created something that we call the roadmap that tags them all with a secret algorithm that we spent years perfecting that takes categories and overlaps all the questions. So rather than write 47 required questions, you might have to only write five. Your diversity essay will work for college A question one, college B question four, college C question three. Really our goal at A-List is to be able to provide you the best opportunity and pathway to college, whether it's building things like your standardized tests or trying to offer academic support or providing help around the college essay. Ultimately our goal is to allow you to move from where you are in high school to success in college. And without further ado, I will pass the microphone along. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we are very excited to have you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Scott. So uh, just uh, one minute on your college navigator. Essentially, we're the premier college admissions advisor uh, covering Long Island, Leslie Nassar, Suffolk. Uh, really, what we're focused on, it says four areas, but there's three areas. Determine which college is the best for you. And it's really important if you can really identify the right college for you and know why it's the right college for you, that's probably the reason why the college should in fact take you. So identifying the right college is really important. Uh, there are many ways to enhance your strengths. Uh, and what we work with students on, what are those ways? How do we determine that? The earlier, the better. And what are the things that you can do to really set yourself apart in a in today's very competitive environment? It's not only your application and, and, the, and the essays, but it's what are the recommendations you're getting? Uh, have you interviewed? Have you spent time at the college? Do you really understand the college? Do they know you? Have you gotten on their radar prior to you ever applying? So we've now worked with about 300 students in NASA and Suffolk uh, with outstanding results. And some of the recent recognition that I just wanted to mention, we've now presented at over 70 libraries, PTAs, high schools, uh, uh, ongoing contributed to Bios, Fios News, and uh, recently interviewed by Newsday, Fios News, and Anton News. So that's just a little trying to help students really understand which are the right colleges them and really help them get into those colleges. So I really want to turn it over now for the real crux of the presentation. I'm going to turn it over to Jan to really talk, to discuss Vanderbilt. All right, thank you so much. Um, this is my first foray into webinars, and I usually talk with my hands, so you'll have to picture me um, sitting here and uh, gesturing wildly. I'll, I'll, I'll attest to it. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, again, my name is Jan Dykey, and I'm an admissions officer uh, with Vanderbilt University. A little bit about me before we talk about Vanderbilt. Um, I've worked for Vanderbilt for about three years uh, and uh, very specifically I work with families and students and uh, guidance counselors in Manhattan, Queens, and Long Island. So I spend a lot of time up here uh, during the fall and in the spring and I know your schools very, very well. Vanderbilt gets a lot of students from this area so I am I'm dedicated. I'm, I'm actually the person who would read your applications. Um, I've worked in higher education for a long time, about 20 years. I lived in Manhattan uh, for about three years, and a few years ago I moved down to fabulous, wonderful Nashville, Tennessee. So I can certainly attest to the fact that I think that I've got the best of both worlds. Love New York, love Long Island, and I love going home to Nashville. Um, and that's a really good place to start when we talk about Vanderbilt. I, I like to frame my discussion in terms of this idea of what we call fit. The college search process is about finding those schools uh, that are going to be a good fit for you and identifying, I like to encourage students to think of their top five list when it comes to fit. What are the things that are really going to contribute to your finding an academic, a cultural, a social, maybe an athletic home for yourself? Um, maybe how close or far away from home you want to be is an important factor. Uh, maybe school spirit is a factor. Maybe it's not something that you thought of. Uh, but if you come up with your top five list, you might find that, as you're listening to me, your top five list for Vanderbilt is maybe a little bit different from your top five list um, for other universities. I think a great place to start 
is with um, geography and location, um, as well as size of institution. Um, Vanderbilt is about 6,800 undergraduates, and we have an incoming class that's about 1,600 students. And in terms of geography, we are located in the wonderful city of Nashville, Tennessee. And Nashville is a uh, two-hour direct flight on both Delta and Southwest from LaGuardia. Uh, and since I lived here and since I spend a lot of time going to and from, I can tell you that um, it's great that it's not uh, a day plane ride away. Um, so for you students, if you are an admitted student, it's definitely a longer drive. It's about 14 hours. Um, but when you come home for things like uh, Christmas or other holidays, um, it doesn't take you all day to get to wonderful Nashville. Um, and when you land at our lovely airport, uh, you'll discover that there is live music in our airport because Nashville is music city. Um, notice I didn't say country music city, although we have the Country Music Hall of Fame and the Lyman Auditorium and the Grand Ole Opry. Um, but everybody comes to Nashville to record and to perform music. So it's really a, a number one place in the country for people who want to record music. Nashville has so many things going for it. It's on so many top ten lists uh, in the past couple of years. It's a place for art and culture and wonderful food. Um, uh, our students are lucky enough uh, to, of course, be on the Vanderbilt campus, but located just a, a short ride away from everything that our downtown area has to offer. Uh, you're seeing some scenes from of life in Nashville um, in and around our campus and uh, downtown Nashville which is a very fun place to go. A uh, little trivia uh, point about Nashville is that I think that we're number two now after Las Vegas in terms of bachelor and bachelorette parties. So people definitely come to Nashville to have fun, uh, to discover uh, music. Um, I went to my first uh, professional ice hockey game at the Bridgestone Arena, which also doubles as a venue for some of the big names who come to camp town, like um, Justin Timberlake and Beyonce. Um, I like to describe Nashville as a kind of a funky, quirky little city. It's about 1.6 million people, but some of the best places to eat and to listen to live music are actually in out-of-the-way venues and places that you um, might find a little bit surprising. And for those of you who might watch the TV show Nashville, um, they focus a lot on a venue called the Bluebird Cafe, which is actually located in a little strip mall. Um, not too far away from campus, but it's definitely a place that's devoted to, to singer-songwriters. Um, so for students from this area who are really looking for an urban experience, you've got the wonderful city of Nashville, and then about a mile and a half down the road, you actually have our campus. And the Vanderbilt campus is, um, it's a traditional campus. It's, it's beautiful. It's self-contained. Um, it's actually uh, 330 self-contained acres in a park-like setting. We're a national arboretum. So it really does, I call it, it looks like the college of your dreams. Um, and um, really one of the distinguishing features of our campus are the, the huge magnolia trees, which we don't have up here uh, in the north, but they grow to be quite large on our campus. Um, and they are evergreen. So we've got a little bit of greenness on our campus during the winter. And in the summertime, they blossom with these large, beautiful, white, fragrant blossoms. And our campus is just a lush and gorgeous place. Yeah, thank you. Um, so you see another scene of uh, Nashville here. Um, and it uh, talks about some of the things that I just mentioned. Uh, we are on a, a river, actually, the Cumberland River. My only complaint about Nashville, really, besides the humidity, is that we're a little bit far from an ocean. Uh, so there's no big, salty body of water. Um, but actually you've got lots of rivers and lakes and ponds. The surrounding area is really a, um, absolutely a great place to recreate. Uh, there's so much beautiful greenery. Our Student Recreation Center, also known as the Vanderbilt Health and Wellness Center, sponsors lots of opportunities for our students to get off campus. Um, so a little bit more about where you actually live on our campus. Um, because we are uh, a residential university, about 88% of our students do live on campus for all four years. And what this means for you is that we have um, a really wonderful uh, community on our campus. Um, and because 88% of students live on our campus, that means that there's so much going on on the Vanderbilt campus. Uh, it really is an incredibly rich environment, um, quite wonderful for our students. Our students come from around the world. 
Uh, they come from, as you can see, uh, many different countries, uh, and our alumni reside in many different countries around the world. Our students, I like to describe them as, as really interesting people. Um, they, they come from, yeah, a, a lot of different uh, types of schools and backgrounds. Uh, they come from large schools and small schools, public and private schools. Um, and they've done a lot of interesting things in high school. Our students sing and dance. Um, they do community service. Uh, they are involved with their families. They have jobs. And so ultimately, Fair to Build is a beautiful campus with beautiful magnolia trees and beautiful buildings. But it's really not about the buildings. It's about the interesting things that our students do. We're backtracking a little bit here in our slides. Um, our 1,600 incoming first-year students actually live together um, in a part of campus uh, that's known as the Commons, otherwise known as the Martha Rivers Ingram Commons. And the way that the Commons is structured, uh, there is a Commons Center, and that's where the cafeteria is, and there's a market there. Um, we typically can accommodate every type of uh, dietary interest or restriction, as most universities do these days. So if you're interested in kosher or vegan or vegetarian, um, and lots of wonderful places to eat on our campus. Uh, but the Campus Center is the home also to advising, undergraduate advising for our College of Arts and Science students. Um, some of our student organizations have offices there in the Common Center. Around the Common Center, there are 10 houses. So this is what we call a residential college model. And the 10 houses range in size from 80 to 300. So you will have a first-year roommate. The people on your floor will be only first-year students. Uh, the houses, of course, have residence assistants and residence directors. I like to characterize Vanderbilt as a place where, yes, you're absolutely going to be challenged by faculty and by the other wonderful students you're living with and learning from, but you're also going to be supported. There's going to be every type of support system there for you. Um, the houses are interesting because they have their own student governments. Uh, they compete against one another in the Commons Cup, uh, which is awarded um, on the beautiful lawn that you see. Um, they have a, a big party before final start. And whichever house has accumulated the most points in academics and athletics and community service actually wins the Commons Cup. So it's a wonderful place to get your feet wet, to start learning about Vanderbilt, again, to build community. But the most amazing thing about the Commons is that there is a real-life faculty member called a faculty head of house who is actually living there in a first-floor apartment. So our faculty, not only do they want to teach you, but they want to live among you. And our faculty don't live there for a month or two. Uh, the faculty heads of house may uh, live in that position for years. Um, I know one faculty member um, who is a surgeon at the Vanderbilt Hospital. She also teaches um, undergraduates, uh, and she lives in her first floor apartment with her stay-at-home husband and her three children, and she's very, very involved in the lives of our undergraduates. Our faculty heads of house will connect with you in ways that are both formal and informal. Um, they might invite you to dinner. I know a faculty member who has um, hot chocolate hours during the winter time, so my apartment's open, come meet my dog, or come say hello, come share your experience with me, come meet some other students. A faculty member also might invite you to a study abroad session. Come uh, speak to people in global education. It really is about creating living, learning environments for you from the moment you arrive on our campus. And it really is, um, it's absolutely a model for success. You will hear people like me talk about uh, retention rates. Uh, a retention rate is you come in as a first-year student and you come back as a sophomore. We literally have retained you from freshman year. Our retention rate, um, because of the commons in, and the, the wonderful things going on there, is actually about 97%, which is uh, far above the national average. Um, and so because we are a residential university, uh, and I mentioned earlier that 88% of our students live on campus for all four years. Uh, Vanderbilt has realized that they, they really want to duplicate the residential college model. Um, and so what you're seeing here is a new residential college model, um, which is called uh, Warren and Moore Colleges at Kassam Halls. Uh, it is home to about 600 and 
630 uh, sophomores, juniors, and seniors divided evenly among them. Um, and again, these are state-of-the-art, brand new. They just opened in August, so they're just being lived in for the first time. Um, and as a sophomore, junior, or senior on our campus, um, you can live in uh, singles, doubles, apartment-style suites. Within Warren and more colleges, uh, you can also experience um, sort of a type of communal living in, in almost a townhouse situation there. And it's also a residential college model um, because we have faculty and graduate students who are living there with you. Um, in, terms of, in terms of Vanderbilt size, um, we are 6,800 undergraduates, which I mentioned before, an incoming class that's about 1,600 students. Um, and because of this, uh, this means that you do have access uh, to faculty and to all of the resources that we have at Vanderbilt. It's very, very important to us that our students have every opportunity um, for research and for internships and to get involved in student organizations. Um, so we're very much a mid-sized institution. Our alumni live around the country and around the world. Uh, they love to uh, meet our students. We have a wonderful alumni interview program for you if you are applying to Vanderbilt. And they certainly love to hire our students for internships and also for, um, for graduate schools, too. Uh, we have a study abroad program. 7% um, of our, our student population is actually international, uh, but you can travel abroad um, to countries around the world uh, with our global education office. And Vanderbilt um, programs also allow you to have an immersive experience where you're living with um, perhaps a family and speaking a language or uh, something that more replicates your Vanderbilt experience in that you're living on a university campus, you're living with other Vanderbilt students, with students from around the world, um, and you can study abroad for a semester or two. Uh, you can also do a shorter study abroad experience during the month of uh, May or during the summertime at Vanderbilt. Uh, both of those latter experiences are actually led by faculty members uh, you might uh, be in uh, a class doing coursework for the first week or two before you have your travel experience, but it's just one of the another, another one of the ways that Vanderbilt offers you incredible opportunities to really enrich your uh, experience. Um, I'm going to talk about academics, and um, if there's one thing to take away um, from uh, the webinar today, it, it's really this idea of academic flexibility. It's a hallmark of a Vanderbilt education. It's something that Vanderbilt does very, very well in allowing students to, yes, focus if you have a particular area of study, but also to explore and discover, um, even if you have a specific area of study. We are a comprehensive liberal arts institution, um, and you will have to and want to take courses outside of your specific area of study. The typical Vanderbilt student really comes in uh, with a lot of different things that they like to do. You'll bring an interest in history or in math or science with you uh, from high school, but then you'll discover courses and uh, departments and majors and things like cognitive studies or medicine, health, and society uh, that you didn't know existed, but they do at Vanderbilt. Um, it is true that uh, the common application um, and now the universal application, there are two ways to apply to us, they do ask you to indicate um, an intended academic college, one of our four, um, and also an intended major, but I consider that to be a formality at Vanderbilt. Um, I think that high school students, they feel a lot of pressure uh, when they are getting ready to apply to college. Um, they have to know what they want to major in, what they're going to do with that, um, and that's not actually true. A typical Vanderbilt student, again, has a lot of things that they like to do and that they want to do, and we make it very easy for them to do that. A lot of our students come in with interests in things that are pretty typical for high school students, like medicine and law um, and business and what we call pre-professional interests. Um, we do not very deliberately have majors in things like pre-business or pre-law or pre-medicine, and increasingly Graduate schools want students from a liberal arts background. Um, my definition of liberal arts is gaining knowledge and skills from a lot of different areas. Having said that, you can absolutely find the coursework uh, that will give you a great foundation 
in those areas. Um, you will absolutely be able to do internships. About 77% of our students do. You'll absolutely be able to do research. Research is happening across all disciplines. Our French majors are doing research, and our education majors are doing research, and our history of art students are doing research. Research is about creating a new piece of knowledge, and it's something that you do have experience with in high school. Um, and employers and graduate students are working for, looking for students who have those real-world experiences. So your Vanderbilt education is not about finding the one thing you're good at, the one thing you're going to major in, the one thing that you're going to do for the rest of your life. It's really about fine-tuning what you want to do with majors and minors, getting real-world experience with um, internships and research and uh, study abroad. It's about building community um, and building your networks and uh, your leadership skills through student organizations. Um, it's about doing all of that and still graduating in four years. I'm going to break it down just a little bit more in terms of our four academic colleges. The College of Arts and Science is home to our, um, our greatest array of uh, majors. About 40% of our majors are there. Um, so the social sciences are there. Uh, the physical sciences are there. Lots of our students who are thinking about pre-med find a home in biological science and neuroscience. And we have a health professions advisory office uh, to help them along the way. It's home to the humanities, um, all of our languages, to theater and art. Our largest major by enrollment is economics. Very attractive to a lot of students who are thinking about business, um, but not necessarily sure if they're thinking about a degree in, in management or marketing or uh, finance or accounting. Um, so you can pursue the uh, economics degree at Vanderbilt. You can also take courses in our managerial uh, studies program in the areas that I just mentioned. You can pick up a minor in something like corporate uh, strategy. Um, so uh, quite a few of our students, because the College of Arts and Science is our largest academic college, do find a home there. Um, another great thing about Vanderbilt is about 30% of our students double major. It's very simple to do between academic colleges. Um, it's also simple to do within academic colleges. That's not something that you have to have figured out when you actually apply to Vanderbilt. Um, that's not something that's required in the application. But sometimes finding a minor can be as simple as um, if I take another course in history, I have the minor. If I take three more courses, I might have another major. Um, the Blair School of Music is a dual academic college at Vanderbilt. Um, about 200 students, it's our smallest academic college, uh, find a home in majors such as composition and performance. The great thing about Blair, though, is that every year, about 2,000 of our undergraduate students who are not music majors, they take lessons with our faculty. Remember, you're in Music City, so our faculty write music, they perform, they have ties to the, the music industry, if you're thinking about maybe an internship in that area. Uh, students also participate in student performance organizations. If you're interested in marching band, if you sing or you play an instrument, concert choir, um, they also pick up the minor in music. Um, so everything is open to um, all of our students, all of our undergraduates within the Blair School of Music. School of Engineering at Vanderbilt is a high-tech, state-of-the-art, cutting-edge, research-focused school of engineering. Again, that's at a liberal arts university. So our engineers want to take courses in philosophy, and they want to become good writers, and they want to study abroad. We have specific study abroad programs uh, for our engineers. We have about 33% women in engineering, uh, which is a, a very high percentage, twice the national average. And students coming into engineering also have the opportunity to explore uh, the engineering majors to make sure that engineering is the right place for them. And last but not least, we have our Peabody College of Education and Human Development. It is home to our most directly people-related majors. Um, Peabody has been the number one ranked a graduate program of education for five years in a row. All of those resources trickle down to our undergraduate students who have an interest in teaching. Uh, cognitive studies, um, child development are also some majors located within Peabody. Our second biggest major by enrollment is also in Peabody. It's a very interesting major called uh, Human and Organizational Development, otherwise known as HOD. It's really the study of how organizations are structured and how human beings affect those structures. Um, I refer to it as a blend of sociology, psychology, and business. 
Um, and uh, it really comes out of the study of psychology. A lot of students um, discover the HOD major um, once they get to Vanderbilt. Um, so Peabody experiences an influx of students because the HOD major is applicable to so many different things that you can do. If you consider that you might always be working for an organization, again, an organization isn't about the, the buildings, it's really about the people and understanding how people operate and why we make decisions that they do um, is an important part of your experience um, within the HOD major, which also includes a capstone program. Um, so you will uh, complete an internship within the HOD major. Faculty, your relationships with faculty, absolutely beyond your own motivation, the secret to your success at Vanderbilt. And I have mentioned that um, we connect you with faculty from the moment you're on our campus when you're living in the commons. Um, you can see our student-faculty ratio there. This is really about symbiotic relationships for those of you who've taken biology. And what that means is that everybody benefits the faculty that I work with tell me that they become better faculty members through their relationships with you. Um, so yes, um, you will be doing research with faculty members. Um, they often tell me that uh, first year students can do research. It's better to come to Vanderbilt and, and get your feet wet and make that transition, but absolutely, um, doing research, creating a new piece of knowledge, again, it's happening in all of our disciplines. It can be a really important part of your Vanderbilt experience. Um, Vanderbilt um, is again dedicated to connecting students with faculty through advising. Uh, so before you even come to Vanderbilt, if you are an admitted student, you'll absolutely be assigned an advisor. Uh, once you become a part of a specific academic college and then a specific major, um, your advisor will change to be someone who is there within that department. Um, who can counsel you on, on all things related to your academics and also, again, to taking advantage of everything that, the, that Vanderbilt has to offer. You'll also be in freshman seminars. Uh, you will have an upper-class mentor uh, through a, um, a program called ViewCept. Um, so, again, we're a place where you will absolutely be challenged. You'll be challenged by the people in the classroom. Uh, you'll be challenged by your faculty members, but there's every level of support for you at Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt is a place um, that really values this idea of balance. Um, and what I mean by that is that I, I really do believe that 50% of your college experience um, happens outside of the classroom. Uh, because of that, because of the interesting people our students are, um, they have created over 510 different student organizations. Um, our students sing, dance, they do all kinds of performance, um, they are athletic. We have every level of athletic competition. We're a Division I school within the Southeastern Conference, the SEC, um, but we also have club sports and intramural sports. I have had the good fortune to have seen a number of our a cappella singing groups, as well as some of the wonderful dance groups. Um, students create new student organizations every year. So every performance, athletic, cultural, ethnic, political, interest that you could possibly have is represented among our student organizations. We have between 65 and 70 that are focused on community service. That's something that lots of high school students uh, participate in in college, in high school, and something they want to do in college. Our largest student organization is actually the Alternative Spring Break. Um, pretty self-explanatory, but it's this idea of um, participating in a community service project over your spring break maybe in Nashville, maybe if you return to Long Island or somewhere else in the country. And it's so popular that about 700 students this past spring participated. And it's also expanded to include alternative winter break. We do have a Greek system at Vanderbilt, uh, 36 different fraternities and sororities. About 40% of our students are Greek, which means that 60% are not Greek. Um, it's in addition to those 510 other student organizations. It's a great way for you to network, to have fun, to get involved in philanthropy. But our Greek system is non-residential. Uh, so again, talking about balance and community on our campus, that means that the Greek students aren't living in the fraternity and sorority houses, and we don't have the athletes who are living separately. It's about Greek and non-Greek 
athletes and non-athletes, music and non-music students living together to create just a really wonderful, welcoming, very friendly atmosphere on our campus. And I, I, this is an, another photograph to show you um, campus, how busy it can be. Uh, the wall is a great place where student organizations are able to um, actually advertise uh, up and coming maybe auditions uh, for theater or for other groups. Um, some more photographs that we have here, some of the dance groups, like I said, which I've had the opportunity to see on our campus. Um, I mentioned the, uh, the Southeastern Conference, um, the SEC. Um, people feel very, very passionately about the SEC, and as someone who really hasn't been that involved in athletics, it's been kind of a fun thing to be a part of. We have 16 different men's and women's sports on our campus, um, and we have two national championships. This year, our baseball team went all the way, and they won the, the College World Series. Uh, we also have a proud history of women's bowling, and we have a national championship in women's bowling. Uh, but again, there's every level of competition through club sports and intramurals as well. Um, and because we're part of the SEC, um, you have access to all of the competitive sports um, in terms of being a spectator at our campus if you just show up with your student ID. Uh, so it's not a matter of actually getting tickets. Um, everything is open to you at Vanderbilt. We have a great venue for our basketball team, Memorial Gym. Um, I went to my first uh, Penn State, I'm sorry Penn State, I used to work for Penn State. <laughs> we used to, um, I went to my first Vanderbilt football game uh, last fall, and there is a Penn State reference here because we won that football game, we went to a bowl game, I drove down to Birmingham, Alabama, uh, with a group of friends, and um, we won the bowl game in Alabama. We played the University of Houston, and our coach uh, promptly left and went to Penn State. Uh, but we're pretty excited this year. We have a new coach from Stanford in the form of Derek Mason. So we got off to a bit of a rocky start uh, this season, but we, we won our second game, so we're expecting big things this year. Yeah. I wanted to mention financial aid, uh, because Vanderbilt has one of the best need-based financial aid programs in the country. We do also offer uh, merit-based scholarships. They are highly competitive, but everyone can apply for them. Uh, but we focus on need-based financial aid because that's where our resources are. Um, and every, every student, every family should go through our need-based financial aid process. All universities are required to have a net price calculator now on their websites. This is a good place for you to begin to determine what your estimated family contribution is going to be because the need-based um, the need-based financial aid process is really about determining what your estimated family contribution is going to be. Um, the expectation is that most families are going to contribute something, uh, but there is a lot of assistance for you from Vanderbilt if you are an admitted student. We want to make Vanderbilt accessible and affordable uh, through our Opportunity Vanderbilt program. And so we make three promises to students. Uh, number one, we are absolutely need blind in the application process. Um, I am the person, I, I said earlier, who would read applications from this area, Manhattan and Queens and Long Island. I don't know whether or not you can afford to come to Vanderbilt and pay for it, and I don't care. It's not a part of our admissions evaluating process at all. Uh, the second two promises are that uh, based on your estimated family contribution, uh, which is a number that you subtract from our total costs, the number that is left over is unmet need. Vanderbilt will meet 100% of that need, demonstrated need or unmet need. Um, and the third promise is that the packages that we have for families will not contain any loans. Uh, families certainly use all of their resources to put together um, their estimated family contribution, but the contribution coming from Vanderbilt absolutely will not contain any types of loans. Um, so because of that, a program that we absolutely uh, instigated or instituted in 2008, the amount of student debt uh, with which our, our students graduate has, um, has reduced drastically. I don't have a slide for this, but I wanted to talk very quickly um, about uh, the application process. Um, at Vanderbilt, we do a holistic reading of every application. Um, I mentioned at the beginning that there are, uh, you should come up with your, your top five list for the things that make a university a fit for you, and Vanderbilt has its top five list. 
And most of the parts of your application, all the parts of your application, will fit somewhere into these five things. Uh, we go through a lot of training to make sure that we're all on the same playing field, a level playing field, when we read your applications. And it really is one of advocacy. Um, I spend a lot of time looking at your applications. I see all of the applications from my territory. I'm in the middle of this process, uh, so I'm not the first person to read an application, and I'm not the last, but I am the person who gives the application the most thorough evaluation. Um, academic achievement is certainly number one for us. Um, it's about putting you within the context of your school, understanding your school profile, how you're graded, and really understanding, looking at your transcripts, what courses have you taken? Have you challenged yourself academically? Uh, looking at grade trends, um, putting together the academic picture of who you are. Uh, number two is standardized testing, which is very important to Vanderbilt. We believe that standardized tests, along with academic achievement, looking at your transcripts, uh, really does give us a complete academic picture of who you are. Um, we accept SAT or ACT. We do not have a preference. We super score the SAT, which means your best critical reading from one date and your best math from another. We do not super score the ACT. We take the composite score. We do not use the writing portion of the SAT in our evaluation. We do not require SAT2s, although students take SAT2s, IB tests, AP exams, and send those scores. And my piece of advice there is just to make sure that, that they make sense, that they really support and complement your application. Number three on uh, our top five list is extracurriculars. My expectation is that if I admit you, you are going to contribute to the life of the university outside of the classroom. My expectation looking at your application is that you have also done this in high school. I don't expect that you've been captain of and president of everything, although some students are, and we certainly see those applications, but it's about your being an interesting person um, with interesting things that you like to do, and I want to read about them on your application, uh, everything that you have done. It's going to really help me be able to characterize who you are academically, but who you are also as a person, and what you're going to contribute to Vanderbilt, because again, Vanderbilt's a great place because of all of the incredible people who are there, our incredible students. Number three on this list um, is letters of recommendation. We require three, one from a guidance counselor, two from teachers, from your solid academic subjects. I get a lot of information about you. Your teachers and your counselors write very specifically about who you are, again, academically and as a person. And I spend a lot of time reading those because, again, I'm, I'm looking for nuances in your application, and I really want to understand the unique person you are. Last but not least, we have the essay, um, which, uh, aside from standardized testing, is everyone's favorite part of the application, and I'm kidding. I know that there are some students out there who really do enjoy writing their essays, and that's great. I am not looking for Ernest Hemingway. The essay should be personal. It's a personal essay. I need to get to know who you are. If you're writing about something that you did, why did you do what you did? What were you thinking? What were you feeling? As far as I'm concerned, um, there really aren't any taboo subjects, although there's some things that perhaps I don't want to read about. Students certainly write about everything. They write about their times and their tragedies, and maybe you're thinking, uh, my life hasn't been that interesting. What am I going to write about? But there are things that make each of us unique. Uh, and sometimes the things that make us unique also perhaps make us a little bit weird. This is um, a word that I'm using with my high school visits. I think weird resonates with high school students. Weird is not a good thing in high school, but I can tell you, the weird thing that you write about in your college essay probably will capture my attention. Um, so think about those things in terms of weird or the things that make you unique, if you prefer that word. Um, that's really everything that we're looking at in the application. If students want to send extra letters of recommendation or if they want to give a link uh, for a website, uh, they can absolutely send that to me directly. If you would like to find me um, online, um, you can go to the undergraduate admissions website, and you'll see um, a section that says on the menu bar, um, your admissions counselor. Um, and you can read a little bit about me and send me an email. Um, anything else that you want to add to your application, I'm happy to add that. Um, and so I'm going to stop right there and see if anyone has any questions. Um, thanks so much for your patience.
with the presentation. Um, it was sort of skipping ahead and skipping around a little bit, so that was a bit confusing, but thanks for bearing with us. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, right in the box on the right-hand side, on the, uh, uh, there's a space where you can enter any questions you may have. But I have a question uh, that we were talking about before uh, that maybe you want to share. Uh, some of the feelings, uh, my, um, some students would might be that there's some quotas, either by school or by geography. Uh, could you comment on that? Sure. Um, we do not have quotas by school by region, by geography. I think you'll find a lot of universities like Vanderbilt are really interested in a diverse group of students. Um, so absolutely, we are looking for students from around the country and around the world. Um, but if we get 10 applications from a school and all of those students are excellent and admissible, we will absolutely admit them. The truth is that that doesn't very often happen uh, because we have students applying to us from a range of abilities and, and, and backgrounds and SAT scores and, and um, you know, extracurriculars and from a range of uh, GPAs. Um, but no, we absolutely don't have any quotas um, with regard to any of the things that you mentioned. Okay. And uh, what about, what percent of uh, Vanderbilt students come from this, from this geography? Do you have a percent? Yeah, actually, um, 9% of our students come from the state of Tennessee. Uh, that shrinks a little bit every year. Um, and about 8% come from the New York metropolitan area. Uh, New York's now tied with um, the Chicago area. Uh, New York students really discovered Vanderbilt about 10 years ago. And so we have great working relationships with the schools and the counselors um, and the students. There's so many great schools here. Um, and as I said, students looking for an urban school that's liberal arts and has a lot going on and really values balance. So many students from this area really find that we're a great fit for them. And uh, I have one other. See, I have the question. Sure, that's right. Talk, talk from the career center point of view and sure. uh, what they do, you know, what, what's, what maybe unique qualities or unique programs that might be from a career center. Sure. Um, Vanderbilt students go everywhere and do everything. So they find um, employment around the country, around the world. Um, and what this means for you is that, again, it's this idea that there are uh, a lot of resources for you on our campus, especially in the form of our Student Professional Development Office. So the Student Professional Development Office, first of all, it's dedicated to helping students find things like internships. Because again, we are about giving you the, the skill sets and the knowledge that you need through majors, but we really want students to have those solid experiences that make them attractive to employers and to graduate schools. Um, so the Student Professional Development Office, they have a lot of tools for assessment. Sometimes students show up and they want to do an internship, but they're not really sure what that might be, what they want to do, what they might be good at, and they can really help you with that kind of assessment. So students take advantage of the Student Professional Development Office. They also use their other resources, uh, family and friend connections, to find um, an internship. And about 77% of our students complete at least one internship. Um, students, of course, are also doing study abroad and research, again, to make themselves very attractive. Uh, at graduation, um, we have a fairly high percentage of students who decide to go on to graduate and professional school. Um, it's, it's very high in my experience in working with other universities, again, because I think Vanderbilt students are so very well prepared. Um, we have about, I think this past year, 32% of the graduates um, who graduated in 2013 went directly to graduate school. Um, and of, of those students, about 70% of them are admitted into their first choice of graduate school. So again, Vanderbilt graduates are very attractive to graduate schools. There's also a percentage of students who go on to do other things, military service. But then we have about 55% um, of our students who are employed um, upon graduation. Um, our Student Professional Development Office uh, really cultivates relationships with companies. So big companies, small companies, every industry that you can think of, they sponsor career fairs in the springtime um, and also in the fall. 
so those same employers are also looking, again, to hire students for internships. So there are a lot of online resources as well. So, so Vanderbilt students go on to do great things pretty much in any type of industry you can think of. Okay, so we have a couple questions. Uh, one question is a uh, student asking uh, he's interested, in, he or she is interested in studying abroad in France. Uh, they want, he wants to know uh, if, they, if Annabelle has a campus in France or an affiliated institution. Sure. Um, you will find that most universities uh, don't necessarily have campuses in all of their study abroad locations, and that's true for Vanderbilt. And what we do is we partner with universities um, around the, the world. There may actually be Vanderbilt faculty teaching. It really just depends. Uh, but absolutely, because we have 123 programs in 30 plus countries, we have experiences um, in France. We have uh, study abroad experiences in every continent, uh, six continents except for Antarctica. I don't know if any school um, has uh, started a program there yet. Uh, but certainly, um, Europe is a very, very popular destination for our students. Australia and the UK um, and Spain um, are also some of our top destinations. Uh, Vanderbilt adds new programs every year. This past year in Uganda and um, Nepal and Serbia and Samoa. Um, France is probably a, a pretty attractive destination for a number of our students who um, want a European experience. Study abroad is um, it's a unique opportunity in college uh, to live in another country for a period of months. Um, so it fits nicely into every curriculum. The study abroad fits really, really wonderfully into every curriculum at Vanderbilt, and it doesn't necessarily extend your stay at Vanderbilt either. So the students who study abroad, about 40% of our students do, they incorporate that into their, their four-year experience. And the other piece of that question is what percent of students study abroad or what number of students typically study? It's about 40% of Vanderbilt students. Yeah, I think you mentioned that, but I think uh, sure. he, oh, absolutely. he was indicating that he, he, he may have missed it. Okay. And the other question, let's see, I got how would you say that the non-professional majors prepare students for grad schools in the professional world? I've considered most of our majors to be um, really non-professional in, in that, again, when we think about pre-professional majors, law, business, medicine, um, Vanderbilt very, very deliberately and specifically doesn't have majors in those areas because we believe in the strength of a liberal arts education. If you research online, if you read about what employers are looking for, they're really looking for students who have knowledge and skills from a lot of different areas. So increasingly, students with a background in math and science who are interested in engineering, um, employers want them to be good writers and they want them to be creative thinkers. Creativity plays a very big role in the School of Engineering. Um, and for students who are interested in things like uh, the humanities, again, having experiences where you're you're doing research and where you're experiencing studying abroad and you're doing an internship where you're working for an organization, you're building those skills, absolutely prepare students for whatever they want to do after Vanderbilt. Well, that's it. I think uh, those are the only questions at this point. Let me make sure. Yeah. So uh, we are really done with the webinar. I have another slide, which basically is, here you go. Uh, just for follow-up, if anyone wants to contact Jen, here's her information. Uh, she and I were talking before, since she travels so much, the best way to get in touch with her is via email. But here is her phone number. It's right to her desk. Uh, here is my contact information as well. And here is the contact information for A-List. So I'd like to thank everyone for participating in the webinar. I'd like to thank Jan for participating. Thank you. And thank you very much. By the way, there, if, uh, we will be posting this webinar on our website, uh, A-List and, and uh, my website, Your College Navigator. And will, we will also be getting an email follow-up. We'd appreciate it if you could just respond. Uh, it's, just a quick, it's a five-question survey. We'd appreciate anyone they could respond to it. And thank you very much.